Worth it. Thanks very much. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the community grants programs that we've started at HOT um, in the last 18 months. Um, it's been quite a, a different program, I think, to how we envisaged, and we've learned quite a lot about how to do it that we sort of wanted to share. Um, and we also wanted some of the grant recipients to share a little bit about how having a grant had changed um, their community. So Janet and Remigio from CrowdMap and Mapiando and Mibario um, are going to kind of share a bit about their experiences as well. But just to introduce, um, HOT gives out grants um, so far in two ways. Um, firstly, micro grants, which are unrestricted funding of two to five thousand dollars, and secondly, device grants, um, which are programs uh, intended to kind of reduce uh, barriers to access to technology and training um, to communities. Um, so we started these programs with a few objectives, um, and they're written on this slide here. So. The first one is help open mapping and open data communities with the resources they need to grow. Uh, so how can we reduce the most basic barriers that a community will face? Um, the second one is to encourage leadership um, skills and uh, a better kind of gender balance and youth participation in, in community projects. Um, a lot of the time when we start working with the community, then um, there might be quite a significant imbalance. Um, and it's something that we would kind of like to help address through the program. Thirdly, uh, to help communities share their stories with the global OSM community um, and to, add, to kind of learn from each other within that network. Um, so there's obviously a lot of people doing really great things, but sometimes those things are quite similar and they're not necessarily connected. Um, so trying to build that together as well. Um, and then fourthly, trying to broaden the ways in which mapping is contributing to humanitarian uh, efforts um, and especially in vulnerable places because that kind of falls within HOT's mission more broadly. Um, so since 2017, and with the help of, uh, and this is a blatant shout out if you want to talk out about microgrants, Amelia, who has done a lot of work to set them up, um, we've now delivered 31 grants in 23 countries, um, so 31 kind of individual communities, um, and the grants range between $2,000 and $11,000, so so far that's about $180,000 um, in kind of disbursements. Um, those have led to 8 million local edits to OpenStreetMap in the communities they live and work. Um, so big focus on the word local there. Um, obviously, aspects of what um, hot and missing maps do involve remote mapping. Um, and one of the big things we really want to do with this program is strengthen the local community that adds kind of additional data um, in those places. Um, so, so far, we're about 8 million edits and 9,710 new mappers who've been kind of trained in those local areas as well. Um, so typically they would be the recipient of training from uh, the leader of that community or other kind of leaders within the community, but also sometimes trying to kind of strengthen that with um, hot trainers as well um, and sending them out to, to those locations. Um, so now we're gonna hear from Janet at CrowdMap about her microgrant experience. Thank you, Rebecca. So, um, having a microgrant um, last year of five thousand dollars was really transformational for our um, project. Um, so, prior to that, we had had virtually no funding. Um, although we had a, a large cohort of remote mappers, it was very difficult to train people in the field because we were entirely reliant on p people who happened to have their own device. Um, and we didn't really have any money for training and so on. So having um, a microgrant last year allowed us to set up community mapping groups um, in around 26 different loca locations across rural Tanzania um, and train, bring people to training uh, to allow them to start to use um, ID editor on small number of laptops that we got, um, but also to use maps.me on the phones that we also got through NetHope, um, and also to do some more in-depth training in things such as JOSM and QGIS and so on. Um, one of the challenges that we had um, is m most of our field mappers are, uh, the local mappers are st starting from a very low base. Um, so. Prior to us getting devices, they were mostly men because they were the ones that had smartphones. Getting the grant allowed us to involve a lot more women, 
but for most of them, it was the first time that they'd used a smartphone or a laptop. Um, many of them had, were starting from a very low educational base, so um, having a microgrant has really transformed the way that we worked. So th thank you <laughs> for uh, giving it to us. Okay, I guess one of the things to mention on that note, so the microgrants are um, entirely funded by the um, end of year fundraising campaign that we do. Um, the target for that is normally about $30,000 and all of that is sent straight to kind of community projects like the one that Janet just described. Um, and so, yeah, when we, uh, I guess, advertise that, um, that campaign, that's maybe a bit more ex a kind of explanation on what then actually happens, uh, happens with that. Um, now, Remigio from Mapi and Remi Barrio, uh, we're just going to show quickly a video that, that the community uh, made about um, their program. Esse é um, é um exercício de empoderamento das, é um empoderamento da comunidade, porque a comunidade ganha assim, uma ferramenta não só do próprio mapeamento, mas também de cultura geral e de conhecimento para poder enfrentar é, as, as dificuldades né, do dia a dia. O objetivo de mapear o bairro é exatamente esse, ter uma informação que possa servir a, aos decisores, que possa servir aos residentes, que possa servir a, aos investidores, a toda gente que tem algum, alguma participação na mapa. Nós queremos convidar a toda a comunidade internacional de mapeadores, queremos convidar as lideranças da ROT e a, principalmente as pessoas que apoiam a ROT com donativos de todo o tamanho, sejam donativos pequenos, donativos grandes. Queremos dizer que estamos muito agradecidos por, por todos esses donativos que permitem a ROT apoiar projetos como o nosso, não só em Moçambique, mas em todo o mundo. Estamos muito agradecidos e queremos convidar a que continuem a apoiar a ROT eh, no excelente trabalho que está a fazer em tantas comunidades, principalmente as comunidades desfavorecidas do nosso, do nosso planeta. So Rebecca asked me to, to talk a little bit about the challenges as well. Uh, this video shows uh, maybe the romantic part of what we uh, have been doing in, in, uh, in Mafalala. Um, 
So uh, she maybe she asked me to talk a little bit about also the challenges. I think I presented some of them this morning, and um, uh, rather than, than repeating, I, I would like to say that uh, for us, uh, as well as, uh, as as Janet just said, the the change that happened with the community from before the micro grant, then to after the micro grant was a, like a, quite a radical uh, change. Uh, we we came from uh, working with. Um, I think we should. Okay. We, we came from working uh, with the um, with, uh, World Bank in a, in a pilot project that was similar to, to Dar es Salaam's uh, Ramani Uriya, so it was quite a big project. And after the funding of the World Bank, uh, uh, was, uh, I mean, the project was ended, then it kind of, the whole community kind of collapsed a little bit. And it's very nice to see that with these small grants we have been, doing, we have been able to do maybe as much or, I don't know, more, it's hard to compare, but we have been doing a lot of mapping uh, based on more volunteer, more peer-to-peer uh, -peer, um, work rather than uh, top-down or like very, uh, a bit hierarchical work. So it's, uh, I think it has made a, a big difference and uh, it's, it's interesting how these uh, small, small budgets can, can produce such impacts while often like the big budgets you, you, you have to, uh, I mean, it's a discussion whether they're impactful in the, in the same proportion. So for us, it, it, was, it was very nice to, to receive the grant uh, last, last year. And today we are a bit more autonomous. I think we depend less on uh, uh, foreign or like uh, financing coming from abroad. We have contacts and we have relationships inside of Mozambique with local NGOs and with uh, other interesting par uh, interested uh, parties. So I think it's, uh, it all comes together really well. The, the micro grant was really a Kickstarter, kind of a Kickstarter for us. So I uh, think it's a, a, a success. Um, so kind of as well as the experience of the communities who, who received the grant, we also wanted to highlight a little bit of the challenges that we faced setting up a program like this. Um, it kind of escalated perhaps a little bit uh, more rapidly than we thought. I don't think that we thought we'd be doing 31 grants in 18 months when we first started this out. So it's definitely been some kind of lessons learned along the way that we thought would be um, helpful to share. Um, the first one being that we had this kind of preconception that we were going to need to provide access to um, training or knowledge about how to map. And we had kind of resourced and planned to say, you know, we've got all these resources and these people you can speak to, and um, that's probably going to be really helpful. Um, and it turned out that we just, we actually just didn't need that at all because OSM already has all of that stuff. Like Learn OSM is amazing, there's loads of local networks, like the, even just kind of OSM Africa WhatsApp groups that people found they were getting all the answers around um, what to map, like, or how to use a tool from. Um, and actually there was a, quite a lot of support that we had to do because of the fact that we were working, um, giving grants to communities. Um, and a lot of the time, like, I mean, communities typically can't actually receive funds from most organizations because they need to be legally registered and all sorts of things. Um, so we came up with several workarounds to kind of make sure that um, it was safe to grant the money. Um, but we didn't want to say you have to be a community because that's the biggest, you, sorry, you have to be an organization because that's a huge barrier to actually receiving any sort of funds. Um, but that meant that typically uh, we were working with groups who hadn't ever received money before, uh, weren't necessarily used to kind of the financial processes or the reporting that comes with that. Um, and so actually we sort of, you know, thought we were going to have to resource here on training and how to map and actually found we had to kind of resource in a, in a quite a separate way. Um, and we also thought that kind of people would be reasonably comfortable with grant processes and actually in those contexts, it was incredibly challenging to deliver something that is essentially a volunteer program in short periods of time. Um, so a local healthcare outbreak or um, elections or something could kind of push, us, could push a program back by, by months and months. And we really learned we had to build that flexibility in and, you know, it wasn't appropriate to expect kind of a community project to to deliver perhaps in the way that um, an organization kind of larger more formal project would um, and so we've learned a lot about kind of flexibility in the process and making sure that it actually benefits the community and isn't just like suiting our timelines because that's easier for us um, 
And um, yeah, there were some other barriers we didn't necessarily anticipate that have been quite uh, challenging, like um, it's quite a significant administration effort, which if anyone is planning to do microgrants, we're more than happy to kind of advise on how we navigated that and, and made it um, as light touch as possible, um, but still being accountable. Um, in the situation where we're essentially giving out community money because the money comes from um, this crowdfunding campaign and then goes still to community projects, we're very aware that we want to make sure that the community are kind of both very clear on what that's being spent on and can see the impact of it, um, which is also quite challenging to do when you, you don't really have kind of a huge amount of resource on it. Um, and... Connectivity is always a challenge, but it's obviously even more of a challenge when you're trying to work with so many locations at once. Um, and so we really became very aware that actually, you know, having set meetings or times for calls was just not the best way to, admit, to kind of collaborate, because if you miss one of them, you're sort of out of the loop. Um, and so we came up with sort of a range of, it actually works a lot better if we just have a WhatsApp group um, and things like that. Um, oh, my computer's just gone to sleep. Um, and then the final one is on sustainability. Um, so to what Remigio was, uh, was mentioning about, uh, what we really wanted the micro grants to be, um, as well as those kind of four goals that we gave, uh, we really wanted micro grants to kind of springboard a community to being more sustainable. Um, but there isn't really a huge amount of consensus on what sustainability is. Um, it means very different things to very different people. It's quite elusive and hard to me measure. Um, so kind of with the approach that it's an art, not a science, um, we decided that there were kind of certain factors that seem to be correlated with longevity and also correlated with kind of increasing data quantity and quality. Um, and so looking at those factors, how should we start to think about sustainability? Um, so we've developed a model which is a draft um, and is very, very much open to feedback. Um, this is all just based on the experience that we have and obviously other people's experience and as our experience grows, uh, we'd love to change it. Um, but we felt like there seemed to be these kind of four categories which impacted sustainability quite significantly, um, which were resources and technical skills, uh, which if you'll see on the bottom side are kind of mostly easier to fund. So when we, when we give out a micro grant, this is mostly the stuff that we're kind of funding on the left hand side. But then there was all these kind of contextual things which are really important for a community like um, organization and governance structure and the networks that they're part of, um, which are, are harder to fund but also kind of lead, tend to lead to much more exciting opportunities. Um, so what we've developed is essentially a model where when can, kind of we start a microgrant now, people can kind of self-assess against this set, um, identify ones that they're interested to um, focus on and improve, um, and then throughout their microgrant and that at the end they can then kind of redo that assessment and see if they think maybe they met, met some of those goals. Um, obviously, we're very aware this is all, pre you know, these is only as good as the model is, etc. Um, and so we are really trying to improve it with the experience that we have, and we're, we're just testing it out. Um, but it's something that we'd love to kind of make widely available to anybody who was um, interested in improving sustainability, even just kind of in an open source community, not necessarily a mapping community, because there's there's quite a lot of overlap. Um, and the asterisk things, just uh, as an FYI, were really like the basic things that we thought. This is like the minimum that you need, uh, which is enough people, um, devices to use, um, access the internet, um, and everything else. You don't need all of these things. Want, some people have kind of one set, some people have another set, um, but as a general blend, this is what seems to work from the communities that we've, we've been working with. Um, so I think we now have a few minutes for questions. Perfect. I don't know if you guys want to stand up too, in case. Just in case. Shouldn't the, technical, the first technical skills be an asterisk? Um, no, because that was something that we thought was easier to learn. But probably. Well, it's just if you have sufficient people and equipment, but you can't do anything. Yeah, I guess you need like one person who knows how to map. True point. So, any questions? Is that Hi, thanks for that. That was very enlightening and inspiring also. Um, I'm with the OpenStreetMap Foundation board, as is Heather, and we're looking at doing things like this also. Uh, you were talking about um, 
accountability and keeping it also lightweight at the same time. So how do you, how do you work? How does that work at a more practical level? Like how do you how, how are people accountable? What kind of reporting um, is in place? How do you do that? Yeah. Um, yeah, good question and challenging to achieve. Um, what we have done is essentially the grants are 12 months and there's a mid-term and an end-of-term report. Um, and when people kind of put in their application for a grant, they say that, you know, this is what I want to achieve. And then essentially they kind of report on how they are against that. But with the caveat that actually you could sort of not achieve some of the things you put on your report, but achieve a bunch of other things, and that might still be, be great. Um, and then from a financial process, just kind of submitting all their um, receipts and kind of how far they are kind of in their spend. Um, because, for example, if halfway through the microgrant process, someone spent 1% of their budget, you might want to kind of replan when you send them the second half of their, um, of their money. Um, and so we've tried to do it like two points in the year just to minimize effort. Um, but what we found last year was that, you know, three of the communities had like natural disasters, hurricane, like um, health outbreaks, etc. And we had to kind of extend that a little bit for them. Did some of the grants have mentors? This is a really good question. Um, so mentorship was something that actually on reflection probably should have gone on the assumptions thing. Uh, we were like, oh, well, we'll give everyone a mentor and then that will just work. Um, and it <laughs> totally didn't work. Um, people ended up having kind of reduced availability perhaps from their orig original mentor, but getting loads of help from people who weren't their kind of official mentor um, or channels. And so I think there was sort of some guidance available, but it wasn't um, as simple as just saying mentor, grantee, off you go. Um, and one thing we built in this year is trying to do more peer-to-peer -peer mentorship because actually Janet and Ramicia were the two people that gave this feedback that they actually learned more from each other than they did from their mentors. And we hadn't really built in a framework for them to, to speak. So that was what we were trying to take advantage of and kind of improve going forward. Uh, how much work is it in a full-time equivalent to manage a program like that? Give or take. To manage it the way that we do, it's probably about a half-time resource, which is Amelia standing in the corner. So if you have detailed questions on process, she will answer all of them for you. Um, but I'd say around about that. And I think if you're doing less than that, then honestly, you're, it, it's hard not to compromise on things like are we sure we know what this money was actually spent on? Um, and so it probably would be possible to do it with less. A lot of organizations give away grants and don't do that much follow-up. Um, but to do follow-up, I'd say half a, half a person. Other question? So were there more uh, applicants than uh, grants given out? And how do you select from that pool? Um, so every year we have a theme for the grants. So last year was pretty broad. Uh, we went for sustainable development goals. And this year it was projects relating to disaster. Um, so obviously, you know, if you pick quite a niche theme, you probably end up with less applicants. Um, but we had about 80 applicants for um, eight grants. Um, and the selection, we built a panel where we had um, just kind of representation of the organization. So we had um, our executive director, Tyler, uh, one senior staff member, one voting member, um, one person from a donating um, organization, because we get match funding for that, um, that program. Um, and I think we'd like to, in the future, build in also like a previ previous grant recipient. Um, but we didn't really have that luxury first time around. Other question? I think it's really interesting that you say that you have a specific focus because if you have that focus then it, it also encourages support within the grantees so I think that's a really neat idea. Um, but my main question was in your first slide where you had the four different um, target areas, 
you say youth participation. Why not older generation? I often feel that the older generation is forgotten. You know, you, all the statistics on diversity that we've been seeing today shows that, you know, the average age is sort of between 30 and 40. Mm -hmm. And often older people have actually got more time and can actually do more and they may, you know, their age gives them certain knowledge that maybe the youth doesn't. So I'm just questioning why youth participation is seen as being so important. Yeah, um, I guess there's kind of both a long and a short answer to that. Um, one thing being that there are kind of a lot of great youth initiatives within OpenStreetMap, and we kind of wanted to support the growth of some of those with um, the microgrants program. So we were interested to kind of promote that. The other being, I guess, slightly more theoretical um, and around kind of theories of change and social change in a community. Um, and a lot of the actual communities that are beneficiaries of these grants are places where people face kind of extreme gender equality um, issues and um, things like that. Um, and there's a lot of research that says, you know, if you kind of capture people at a time of change in their life anyway, you have a much kind of higher chance of um, changing perhaps the way that they think about certain issues or the way that they contribute to issues. Um, so we were quite kind of passionate about kind of capturing people at a moment of change, i.e. kind of going to university or leaving university. And with that moment, also kind of introducing other things that we'd love them to be involved in for kind of the rest of their lives. Um, encouraging kind of older generations to participate, I think, would be fantastic. Um, but it would be a huge challenge um, in terms of it, like ability to use equipment kind of in current current state and that kind of thing um, and secondly no one applied for no one had any project applications but were working with older generations so you know we weren't kind of choosing what the micro grants are about we receive applications and accept some applications and none of them were focused on working with older um, communities so if someone wants to do that next year then you can be different <laughs> try to be fast we I have uh, only a few minutes. Okay. I'll be real fast. Uh, just a small question. Did you actually rate the projects in any form, success, fail, or finer than that? And how was the outcome? I assume not all of them actually achieved their goals. Yeah, um, I'd say every, every community achieved something. It wasn't necessarily what they planned to achieve at the start, um, definitely. Um, we did kind of rate their, um, their reports as they came in to decide if they, um, in the midterm report, if they get their second tranche of funding or not, and in the end of the report to say, would we fund this person again? Um, one thing we're really interested to do is actually to kind of say that, you know, all of us here know that sustainability isn't like a magic word that you can paint a brushstroke and achieve in a year. And we'd quite like to get to the stage where, for example, like the best final report, um, like the community that achieves the most in their final report gets the grant again the next year um, or something like that to kind of, again, like bring enthusiasm and kind of continuity to, to more of the programs. Um, but yeah, I would say there wasn't any community that kind of didn't achieve anything, um, but there was sometimes a disconnect between what they'd planned at the start and what for various and kind of myriad reasons they ended up working on something a bit different. Okay, we can move on to the next talk. <laughs>